Color Wheels is a professional tool for video color correction that helps to grade images, including changing their saturation and brightness. Color Wheels are widely used, but many videographers might not know the extent of this tool's possibilities. So today, we will explore the principles of working with Color Wheels. We will also compare Color Wheels to Log Wheels, an important distinction and a popular question ever since the Log Wheels tool was released as part of the 2.5 update of Color Finale 2 Pro. And, of course, we will show some practical ways of working with them. We hope you enjoy watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon to be the first to watch our new videos. To start with, let's open up a linear grayscale gradient and a Luma waveform. They will help to understand how the tool works. Let's apply Color Finale 2, go into the Layers panel and select Color Wheels. We can see three color wheels called Lift, Gamma and Gain. Lift is for shadows, Gamma is for midtones and Gain is for highlights. Each of the wheels has its own saturation, brightness and hue controls. Have a look at the Luma waveform. The gradient is clearly visualized. It is easy to see how the lift, gamma and gain wheels affect the different brightness regions. In the lower part are shadows, in the top part are highlights and midtones are in the middle. Let's first adjust the brightness. Lower the brightness under lift. Shadows turn darker until they are completely black. But the brightest parts of the image remain as bright as they were. Let's undo and try the same thing with gain to make the highlights brighter. We can see the change clearly on our gradient and the scope. While the shadows haven't moved. And when we lower the brightness, the shadows are still in the same place, and it's the highlights that have been brought down. If we raise the brightness in the midtones, notice that the shadows remain dark while the rest of the image becomes lighter. The midtones become darker, the shadows and highlights stay the same. Before continuing to work on video color correction, it's important to grasp the idea that each color wheel is responsible for a different tonal region of the image shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's take a look at a practical example. In front of us is footage from a city shoot. The image has low contrast, but we can work on it by changing the brightness of shadows, midtones, and highlights. The highlights are in the sky and sometimes on the houses. The midtones make up the houses themselves and some parts of the sky. The shadows are between the houses and also the darker buildings. We always start by modifying the shadows first. Let's make them darker. Then we work on the highlights, keeping in mind that if we raise the brightness past a certain point, information in these regions will be lost. After doing these steps, if necessary, we can work on the midtones too. Now as you can see, we have given the image a lot more contrast. But still, this video clip also lacks saturation. We can change the global saturation of the entire image by using the SAT slider on the right. We can also target the saturation levels of the shadows, midtones and highlights individually. Sometimes doing this is useful. For example, to make sure that the shadows are pure black, and that they don't have any color tint in them. In our case, it's not necessary to do this. Let's finish up by only increasing the global saturation. And this is the result. Now let's move on to do some color grading. From a theoretic approach first. Open up the vector scope. It comes in very useful for assessing changes in color. At first, we have this grayscale gradient. So we don't see any deviations into any colors from the center of the vector scope. But let's start grading the shadows. Move the puck that's in the center of the color wheel towards any chosen color. 
you can see clearly that only the shadows move toward the chosen color. The vector scope reflects the changes immediately. Now let's grade the highlights with a complementary color. The shadows remain cyan, but the highlights are now red. The vector scope displays this new color as a vector. After this, we can modify the midtones by mixing in any desired color. Let's get a practical example of color grading underway. Grading helps us change the style of this clip. For example, we can imitate the look of a different part of the day, such as sunset in the evening. We can change the lift, gamma and gain independently with this layer. In case we don't like the result, we can always undo the changes without affecting the brightness and saturation. For now, let's create a new layer to show how grading can be a separate process to modifying brightness. Note that in Color Finale 2, grading operations are non-destructive. This means that adding multiple layers does not affect the quality of the final result. We again start with the shadows and move them towards a deep blue. After doing this, we then add a bit of magenta to the highlights, so that the clouds take on a slight pink tone, like during a sunset. Next, the midtones are pushed towards orange, to make it look like the houses are illuminated by the setting sun. To get the feel of a late evening, it is enough to drop the brightness in the highlights. And here is the result. Under each of the wheels, there are numerical RGB values that reflect the position of the puck within the circle. They can be manually edited, for example if you want to drop the value of one channel entirely. We can also switch over to using sliders instead of wheels. This mode might be familiar to many. Now we can control the mix of red, green and blue channels individually in order to get a particular color. Let's take a look at another practical example. In this image, we see that there is what appears to be a green tone. But to make our work more precise, to learn exactly what colors we need to work with, let's open Waveform RGB Parade Scope. RGB Parade is another very useful instrument that clearly shows which of the channels, red, green, or blue may dominate an image. When the balance of all colors is on the same level, we get the perfect white balance. Sliders is a very handy option for working along with this particular waveform display mode. If we lower or raise one of the sliders, the scope reflects the changes. The shadows get more or less red mixed into them. You can see this on the scope while we are moving the red channel slider. In the highlights and in the midtones. You absolutely must try this combination of using sliders together with the RGB Parade waveform. Let's match the waveforms to get our white balance. So let's start with the shadows. Drop the green a little bit. Now the blue as well. Now let's go to the highlights. And then the midtones. After this, let's go over the shadows and highlights one more time. Now all three waveforms are equal. Here is the result. Well, in the last part of this video, let's answer a common question we've been getting after our 2.5 update. What's the difference between color wheels and log wheels? As you might have guessed already, log wheels is something to do with log footage. 
we use this layer to work on material that's been shot in log. Let's apply it now. For working in log wheels, first it is important to convert the log footage into a video color space. This can be done manually, with assembling a set of individual color correction tools, or done with pre-made conversion LUTs. This is the important bit. Log wheels especially shine when they are used in conjunction with a conversion LUT, and in a specific order. When you add a LUT layer and a log wheels layer, the log wheels layer should always be in front of, that is, underneath the conversion layer. The tonal range of log images is different to that of regular video. The regular color wheels layer doesn't allow it to adjust tones encoded in log footage in an expected manner. Now, with the help of log wheels, we can make adjustments to the log footage itself. We have three color wheels in which we can change the tones of different brightness regions shadows, midtones, and highlights, and an extra fourth color wheel which affects all of them. We can also change the brightness of these areas with a slider just below each wheel. Now, if we want to make artistic edits, we can add a good old color wheel layer or any other tool. Just remember to add these after, that is, above, the log wheels and the conversion LUT layers. Here is the result after slightly adjusting the original log footage with log wheels converting the log footage to a video color space and then applying artistic edits with a color wheels layer. In the next video we will continue to explore color wheels, we'll go over video matching and also the automated tools that help with color correction. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thank you, goodbye.